take a look at a 5K race held in honor of our country's veterans. Then we preview a new kosher bistro on campus that is cooking up some fresh and healthy food. All this and more on CTV News starting right now. Good evening, CSU and Fort Collins. I'm Alexandria Clow. And I'm Brin Carmen. The general election is finally over. While Donald Trump won the presidential election, the state of Colorado did go blue in support of Hillary Clinton. The state also re-elected Democratic Senator Michael Bennett to the U.S. Senate and Democratic Congressman Jared Polis to the U.S. House of Representatives. When looking at local measures, Colorado passed Proposition 106, which allows medical aid in dying. The state also passed Propositions 107 and 108 that opens both presidential and party primaries to registered independent voters. Amendment 69 Colorado CARE failed by a large amount. Larimer County Ballot Issue 1A, which would have increased taxes to construct a treatment and detox facility for mental health, substance abuse, and alcohol abuse, also failed. Finally, Amendment 70, which increases the minimum wage in Colorado, passed. For a full list of the Colorado election results, you can go to collegian.com. The 7th Annual CSU Veterans 5K took place on Saturday and was put on by the Adult Learner and Veterans Services. The nonprofit event had a great turnout and with almost 300 runners participating. Community together, it also celebrated 100 years of ROTC at Colorado State University. Each runner had to pay a fee of $25 to take part in the 5K. All of the proceeds went toward something special. And we all are here to raise money for veteran education. All the proceeds from today go to a scholarship through the university. Um, for veteran education. Uh, that goes beyond just what we do as, as a campus. It goes you know, to the community involvement. This event presents the opportunity for a community to be involved at CSU as well. Runners were able to register in groups and run the race together. One group that I was able to talk with ran to represent all veterans at CSU. Um, we're all out here representing the Army ROTC program here at CSU as well as supporting our veterans in our community. Um, there's a lot of them here at CSU, and so we just like to come out and represent our ERTC, as well as the veterans here. While a lot of people came out to run the race to support our student veterans, one particular family came out to honor a special fallen hero. My son Mitchell Vandenberg um, was killed two weeks ago, and my good friends and family, since they were doing the veteran, he was in the Army for six years, and since they had this run, they just decided just to all come out and celebrate Mitchell because he was an awesome kid. He loved to dress up. He would often go out in costume and he had lots and lots of mustaches. If he couldn't dress up the whole thing, he would like just put mustaches on, so we wanted to do that as well. If you did not have a chance to make it out to the 5K and would like to donate money to the Veterans Scholarship Fund, you can visit advancing.colostate.edu slash veterans. In honor, in, in honor of Veterans Day tomorrow, this ALVS will be holding an event called National Roll Call. This event will honor 6,886 veterans at the LSC Sculpture Garden. CSU basketball player Jean Clavel was arrested by CSU PD yesterday, Wednesday, November 9th. Clavel was charged with false imprisonment with domestic violence and enhancement and booked into the Larimer County Jail. Police records report Clavel was taken into custody on the CSU campus at 750 Meridian Avenue, which is the address for the CSU police station. Clavel was also arrested by CSU PD on July 16, 2015 on the same charges plus harassment after an altercation with his girlfriend on campus. However, all three charges were dropped after after the case was dismissed in August of 2015. Records show Clavel was released today on a $750 personal recognized bond after appearing before a Larimer County Court judge. The application for the 12th Annual Citizens Police Academy hosted by the CSUPD opens this coming Monday, November 14th and is available until January 6th. The academy allows students and faculty to learn about general po police tactics, how to investigate crime scenes, laws relating to policing, and more. Anyone from the CSU com community is encouraged to apply. <clears throat> However, 15 students and 10 faculty members will be admitted into the academy. Students who apply must have a, a 2.5 GPA or higher, and all applicants cannot have any felony <coughs> or misdemeanor convictions in, on their record. Classes for the Citizens Police Academy will start on February 2nd and of 2017 and take place every Thursday from 6 to 8 in the evening for 12 weeks. 
Eating kosher is a popular diet for people of Jewish faith. However, more and more people are choosing to eat kosher because it's fresh, clean, and healthy. The CSU rabbi, CSU president Tony Frank, and the housing and dining community have been working to create a kosher dining experience that is now finally open to the public. In October, the first and only kosher certified eatery in Larimer County opened for business inside CSU's Parmalee Dining Hall. Even though it was a long process because it's not as easy as making any sort of dining option, um, we got it done and there's what, uh, like 15 people standing in line to get a schnitzel sandwich right now, so that's really exciting. With the combination of high quality food, a robust menu, and keen attention to detail in the kitchen, the rabbi is not surprised the new bistro is the most popular dining hall option at CSU. You know, it just, it just, it really, really warms and gladdens my heart. What it tells us is what we thought from day one, that this was not just going to be an option for Jewish students, it was going to be a wonderful addition to both the culinary and diversity aspects at CSU, which is just an amazing place. The Kosher Bistro follows strict dietary rules that represent the Jewish tradition, but the bistro is open to all students, staff, and faculty, regardless of faith. So, I don't know how many of these people are Jewish, maybe none, and it doesn't matter. They're enjoying that amazing experience of having something different, having something delicious, um, and having something that's very popular around the country and around the world. Good kosher food, there's nothing better than it. The students are they're great, they like the food, they like to try a different food, they want to try what is, they're asking a lot of questions, what is kosher, and what they mean kosher, so we're trying to explain to them as much as we can. It's made with a higher standard, you know, because kosher, the diet has so many restrictions, it makes it harder for subpar food to get through, which I love, and uh, he really cares about it, I really care about it, so. The Kosher Bistro is open in the Parmalee Dining Hall Monday through Thursday from 11.30 in the morning to 1.30 p.m. for lunch and 5 to 6.30 for dinner. A bill that would allocate funds toward developing eight zip bike, zip bike share stations on the CSU campus was sent to committee by the ASCSU Senate this Wednesday night. Bill number 4607 is a partnership between ASCSU, Zipcar, Zagster, and, and Zagster. Talk of bringing a... Bike share program that would integrate with the Fort Collins bike share system has been ongoing since 2015. The current deal with Zipcar is a time sensitive partnership that would allow ASCSU to introduce a system at a reduced price. If the new system is approved, it would cost $70,000 for four years. The bill was sent to committee so senators can talk with their constituents about the program. To receive the bikes at the reduced price, ASCSU and providers must agree on the finalized deal by December. The holiday season is quickly approaching, which means that the thousands of strands of lights in Old Town are officially back. This past weekend, the annual lighting ceremony was held, setting the streets of Fort Collins aglow. The dazzling display of low energy and sustainable LED lights cover seven blocks of trees, storefronts, and alleyways. They will be up now until the end of winter, so make sure to make your way to Old Town to enjoy the magical atmosphere. Have you been to Old Town to see the lights yet? I went last weekend and it's so pretty. It feels like Christmas down there. It's so beautiful. I wish they kept them up all year long. Oh, I do too. I would be so happy if they Me did. Me too. <laughs> Coming up next, weather anchor Ryan Christ has your weekly weather forecast. Then we take a look at the world of sports with Tim McCall. Into KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State, on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out Collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab.
Good evening Rams, I'm Ryan Christ and I'm your weather anchor tonight and as you can see this is our live camera looking over the Fort Collins campus and you can see it is very dark due to the daylight savings time. I am still not used to it being pitch black at 7 o'clock. Next we have our current temperatures. Tonight we have a low cool 48 degrees and our sunset was at 46 degrees or 40, 4 o'clock and uh, p.m. and our winds is a slight breeze at 6 miles per hour. Our uh, Tonight's lows is, as you can see in the I-25 corridor, it is very cold on 30s all the way down the I I-25 corridor along the Eastern Plains. Very cold as well up in Sterling, it's 30 degrees. Tomorrow's highs down the I-25 corridor, it'll be a bit more warm than usual. It's uh, 56 degrees averaging down the I-25 corridor and along the Eastern Plains, it'll be around the same temperature, 50 degrees, 58 in Sterling. And then planning your Friday, uh, You'll see that we'll start our morning with a very cool day at 8 a.m., very clear. Then in noon, it'll raise to 54 degrees, be a nice, cool and clear day. And then at 4 p.m., it'll definitely start feeling like fall with 55 degrees. Our weekly planner, you can see on Friday, it's going to be a very clear day with a very nice, clear weekend up in the upper 60s. And then throughout this week, Monday through Thursday, it's going to be in the 60s, getting as high as 73 on Tuesday, and then partly cloudy, ending our week with Thursday. And that is all the time we have for now. Up next is Tim McGraw with sports. fans. I'm your sports anchor, Tim McGraw. Oh, check, check that. It's Tim McCall. And here I am with all the latest in the world of Ramp Sports. The CSU volleyball season is winding down, but it's not too soon to start looking ahead to next season. Yesterday, head coach Tom Hilbert was excited to introduce the incoming freshman class for the 2017 season. Three of the four new members of the Rams family, Maddie Fouts, Jenna Heimeyer, and Anna Dentry are considered defensive specialists who will help the team from the backcourt. The remaining incoming freshman is 6'4 hitter Ellie Gubser. Gubser will add to the depth that CSU currently has up front and because of this she's expected to redshirt during her freshman year next season. However, once Gubser does crack the lineup, um, expect her exceptional size and skill to translate into big plays on the court for the Rams. In other CSU signing news, Rams women's, women's tennis coach Jared Camerata also announced his first recruiting class since taking the position as women's tennis coach just a few months ago. Camerata was excited to announce that all three incoming recruits are four-star recruits and they figured to make an impact on this tennis team fairly early in their careers here at CSU. Emma Corwin, Emily uh, Lutenschwager, and Priscilla Palmero were all standouts during their high school careers and are all familiar with each other having grown up in the upper Midwest, which is the main recruiting area for the CSU ten tennis team. Palmero was the two-time Wisconsin state champion for women's singles, and it appears that she will be a big difference maker on the tennis team next season. Although the news of these recruits is exciting, Rams fans will have to curb their enthusiasm for a little longer. The CSU tennis team will begin their current season this January without these three recruits and will look to improve on their 5-15 and 15 record from last season. 
With the news of these th three recruits and the talents that they possess, there was plenty of optimism surrounding the CSU tennis team. Make sure to follow this CSU tennis team this year in the Collegian to see if they can find success and improve on last year's disappointing season. In CSU basketball news, on Tuesday, the men's basketball team played their final exhibition game before the beginning of the regular season. The game saw a Rams victory at the hands of Regis University. After a slow first half, the Rams only led by five points at halftime. However, they came out of the gate fast in the second half, jumping all over Regis and establishing a commanding lead. After dominating the first minutes of the second half, the Rams never looked back, grabbing the victory 75 to 60. The Rams were led by senior forward Emmanuel Amagbo, who finished with 16 points and was just one rebound away from a double-double. Redshirt freshman Nico Carvaco was also a large contributor, posting nine points and five boards. Another exciting sight for CSU fans was that highly anticipated transfer Shea Bob was suited up and in action for this game. Bob, who has been dealing with a wrist injury over the course of the preseason, looks to be healthy and ready to go for the beginning of the season. The Rams will be back in action this Sunday as they kick off their season against New Mexico State at 2 p.m. in Moby Arena. Don't miss out on the start of what looks to be another promising season for CSU men's basketball. In CSU football news, the Rams will look to raise the Ram Falcon Trophy for the third time in the last four years as they head to Colorado Springs to take on Air Force this Saturday. The Rams sit at 5-4 and four on the season, and a win this weekend would be the, one of the biggest wins of the year thus far for the Rams, as it would officially make them bowl eligible. CSU's offense will face a tall task this weekend, as Air Force currently owns the 19th ranked defense in the country. Quarterback Nick Stevens, in particular, will look to continue the strong season he has had since taking over for Colin Hill. Stevens has thrown for eight touchdowns and completed just under 60% of his passes. Most important to Stevens' success is the fact that he's only thrown two interceptions all season. Turnovers are absolute killers on the offensive end, and Stevens' ability to avoid turnovers has led to his success thus far. Air Force, a team that has caused, just, has, that has caused 14 turnovers on the defensive end this season, will look to disrupt Stevens' rhythm and uh, force him out of his comfort zone. If CSU's offense is able to move the ball into the red zone, expect to see heavy doses of running back Izzy Matthews. Although Matthews does not lead the team in rushing yards, he does lead the Rams in rushing touchdowns with eight. It is clear that Coach Bobo has become comfortable with relying on Matthews over every other running back that he has to pound the ball into the end zone on a consistent basis. If Nick Stevens and Izzy Matthews can continue to lead the offense like they have over the past few weeks, expect CSU to roll this weekend and put themselves into position to make a bowl game this season. Don't miss a very important game for CSU football this weekend at Air Force at A15 on ESPNU. That's all we have for sports tonight. But stay tuned because next up, it's Emma Ionicone with entertainment. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchool.com. Good evening, Rams. I'm Emma Iannacone, bringing you the latest in entertainment news. Obviously, we could talk about the election today, but I'm sure you're a little sick of it. So let's talk about pop culture and local entertainment news. Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart premiered their television show called Martha and Snoop's Potluck Dinner on Monday night. They had guests Ice Cube, Wiz Khalifa, and Seth Rogen join them to cook some delicious food, which of course included a special green ingredient. Many people are surprised at how well the odd pair worked together, especially me, because I thought the only thing Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart had in common was their criminal records. You can catch the show on Monday nights at 8 p.m. on VH1. 
Black China and Rob Kardashian had their baby this morning, and of course they named it something, well, let's just say unique. Can you guess it? Dream. Dream Renee Kardashian is a healthy little baby girl and the family is so happy to be welcoming her to the world today. The couple has been engaged since April and now they can have their daughter present when they say their vows. I've got some bad news for chocolate lovers out there. Toblerone has removed some of their delicious nougaty triangles from the candy bar in order to deal with rising prices of chocolate. Instead of hiking the prices of the candy bar, the Tobel family decided to just reduce the amount of the product by 10%. And people are not happy about it. But don't worry, it seems to be only affecting the UK, but who knows? Maybe we will see, soon see a cutback of the delicious chocolate bar here in America. On a lighter note, this weekend KCSU is putting on a concert. CTV is proud to be a part of Rocky Mountain Student Media, and we are happy to celebrate the 125th anniversary of the Collegian newspaper. And we celebrate in style. Get ready to rock on with the Velveteers and Post Paradise at the Music District tomorrow, November 11th. There will be beer, food, and lots and lots of local music lovers to chill with. Get tickets at eventbrite.com or check it out here on the Facebook page where there will be a link on the Collegian Facebook page. That's all I've got for tonight. Tune in next week for more updates on local news, sports, and entertainment. Have a good night, Rams.